Hi everybody, how's it going? My name is Nick and welcome back to Astro Exploring. In tonight's video we're talking meridian flips. Why do we do them? What are they? And how do we do them? Now if you look directly south or directly north and look up and essentially cut the sky in half by drawing a line directly from north to south as shown here in Stellarium and that is what we call the meridian. Now, a meridian flip is the point where your deep sky object crosses the meridian from the east to the west, and the way that a equatorial mount works means that we need to do a flip so that when the mount is rotating, the um, equipment doesn't hit the tripod legs and cause damage. Now, when your mount is rotating in right ascension, it can do that one of two ways. Now, if you're imaging a target that hasn't yet gone past the meridian in that night, then you'll find that your weights from the home position uh, start to go up. And if your target has already gone past the meridian, you'll find that your counterweight moves up so that as it uh, tracks the Earth's rotation, the weights start to move back down towards the home position. And the reason that it's important to do a meridian flip is because if you don't, then you'll find that as your gear rotates, your imaging equipment, uh, obviously we'd, this would be turning in, in declination as well, uh, your imaging equipment will at some point hit the tripod legs. Now, the point in which it will hit the tripod legs is dependent upon um, the gear that you have. So I've got um, the Skywatcher 72 ED. That's a very small wide field refract refractor with a DSLR attached. I can comfortably go um, past an hour after my target has gone past the meridian before I have to do a meridian flip. If you've got a much bigger telescope, uh, you know, a sort of 120, 150 ED refractor, uh, which is much longer, you might find that um, you can maybe only go past 10 minutes past the meridian before you have to do your flip. And I have to be honest, even until fairly recently, I always tried to avoid imaging targets that were going to pass the meridian at some point during the night. And I did that for a couple of reasons. One, I didn't know how to do a flip. And two, the thought of doing a flip and then trying to um, frame up your target again in exactly the same way as it was when you were imaging prior to doing the meridian flip uh, just sort of daunted me a little bit and I didn't really want to do it so I always avoided it where possible. Now however with a little bit of practice and a bit of know-how um, the, the process isn't actually as complicated as it may seem. Uh, I think it is a process that daunts a lot of beginners um, but the f carrying out the flip itself could not be easier. The trickiest part is to frame up your target the same as it was before. So in the example that I'm going to be using tonight, I'm going to be imaging the Veil Nebula. I'll be able to get in about half an hour before I have to do a flip. And after I do the flip, I'm going to have to do those um, adjustments again to make sure that I get it framed up correctly. I can't just rely on it being in the center. So now all I need to do is wait for it to get dark. And now it's time to do a meridian flip. So I've been imaging on the Veil Nebula for about 45 minutes now. And as you can see, if I bring you over. So this is the leg that faces north. And so when it's in the home position, the counterweights would be pointing down the uh, tripod. And so the position that it's in at the minute is basically parallel to the ground. And it's sort of just gone past the meridian in the last few minutes. Essentially what's going to happen when I do the flip is that the counterweights are going to go from here and it's going to do a full 180. It's going to come down, round and here and the telescope is going to do an adjustment so that it's then pointing uh, to the same point of the sky in the declination axis as well. Um, but you can see if I if I left this going so at the minute um, you know I can get my fist in that in that gap there um, I can I comfortably go for probably another hour, I would say. There's, there's not really uh, much point uh, leaving it. So I'm going to do a meridian flip. Annoyingly, it's gone um, really cloudy. Um, I don't know if you can see, there's a bright part of the sky over there. That's where the moon is. Um, it's completely clouded over. I'm going to do this by using the uh, keypad on the mount and then just making manual adjustments on the keypad to make sure that we're still pointing in the same direction. And so, 
you go, what are you doing? The process of manually doing a Meridian flip could not be easier. So I've got the handset here and all I'm going to do is, so I'm already on my target of 69.60, um, although adjusted slightly so that I can get the Eastern Veil Nebula in as well. Now, so once it's gone past the Meridian, uh, the best place for the mount to be is for this to have shifted 180 degrees because the mount knows that it's gone past the meridian. So all we need to do is press enter. It's going to ask if you want to view object. Press enter again. And it's now going to move the mount. All right, so you can see that now the counterweights are still parallel to the ground, but a complete 180 and the telescopes adjusted the declination to uh, point to the same part of the sky. So now as the mount is tracking uh, the Veil Nebula or whatever object it is that you're tracking through the night, it's now going to start moving back down towards home position there instead of carrying on up and, and round. So we can now image for the rest of the night without having to worry about um, the equipment hitting the uh, tripod and getting damaged. Now unfortunately it's completely clouded over at the minute so before I start doing um, some test shots to make sure that I'm still centered on the object uh, I'm gonna have to wait for the clouds to clear. Okay let's have a look at that. So you can see the Western Veil Nebula in the middle of the frame there, often referred to as the Witcher's Broom Nebula, um, and that's pretty much exactly the same position uh, that it was in before. And that's important because when you're stacking your images in uh, Deep Sky Stacker, if this isn't in the centre of the frame then you'll get really weird um, stacking artefacts um, dotted uh, sort of around the edges here. Um, so it is really important to make sure that you frame your target up after a meridian flip. As you can see the process for a meridian flip is really quite simple um, but it is vitally important that we do it to protect our imaging equipment. The trickiest part about a meridian flip with the way that I've done it is just framing up the target again afterwards to make sure that it's in the same place as it was before the flip. Um, you can do that just by doing a couple of test shots uh, making small adjustments um, if needed. But this is where plate solving would really come into its own because you can do your Meridian flip and then the plate solving software will just uh, nudge the mount into the exact right position to get straight back onto your target and get your images going straight away. As I say, you can fully automate your system so that it is taking images, it does the Meridian flip when it needs to, plate solves back to where it is and then carries on imaging as it was before. However the process to get to that point is really quite complex. It requires a lot of experience, a lot of setting up, a lot of calibration and, and there's quite a lot that could go wrong just in the setting up of your imaging equipment in that way so I was keeping it simple here just for those that don't know how to do a meridian flip just so that you can get used to the process and then once you've done that you can sort of increment up to more, more complex stages as you get more confident. And with that I will leave it there. I hope you guys found this video useful. Please remember to like, subscribe and comment. And thank you so much for watching. My name is Nick and this has been Astro Exploring. Catch you guys next time.